Warning, if you decide to adopt a whole food plant-based diet, just be aware that everyone is going to become like your nutritionist slash your mother. Okay you guys, so before we jump right into today's video, we just wanted to remind you there are only a couple of days left before the plant-based bundle expires. You'll be getting 90 plus ebooks, courses, and other amazing content from all of your favorite vegan influencers for only $50. And even better, if you purchase the bundle through our specific link in the description below, you'll be entered to win a Vitamix Ascent Blender, which is a $600 value. We'll put the link in the description below so you can check out the bundle website and see what kind of amazing content is included other than the 3,000 plus recipes. There are also workout and weight loss plans and so much more. Jump on it before the offer expires and it goes away forever. If you guys like fruits and veggies, <laughs> give this video a thumbs up. This is our spring food haul. This is like two shopping carts worth of groceries. For whatever reason, we needed a whole bunch this week and we thought, well, let's just shoot it and show you guys what it is that we get every week from the grocery store. <laughs> Not only are we gonna walk you through what we eat throughout the week, we're gonna talk to you a little bit about how to make sure you're getting exactly what you need on not just a vegan diet, but a whole foods plant-based diet. Yep. If you decide to adopt a whole food plant-based diet, everyone is gonna be so worried about number one, where do you get your protein? So we're gonna answer that question first. Welcome to planet Earth. Every single plant food on the planet has protein, some more than others, but if you're getting enough calories throughout the day, guaranteed you're gonna be getting enough protein. So protein, why do we need it? How much do we need? And what are some good sources? So protein, number one, it's like the building block, right? So it builds and repairs not just our muscles, but like pretty much every cell in our body. And how much do we need? Well, the WHO recommends about 0.66 grams per kilogram of body weight. So an average size person, like 140 pound person needs about 50 grams of protein a day. You really only need about 10 to 15%. I usually get at least 20, like I said, without even trying. So some of our favorite sources are like beans, grains, legumes, tofu, like soy is obviously really great for you. Contrary to what we all believe, like man breasts and all of that stuff, it's all like been debunked. So don't be afraid of soy. Eat your beans, eat your grains, and you'll thrive on a plant-based diet. So of these nutrients, protein is actually the only macronutrient that we're gonna focus on. Now we're gonna dive into some vitamins, minerals, and other micronutrients of importance. Number one being iron. First and foremost, because I am 32 weeks pregnant, so iron is of utmost importance if you are pregnant or breastfeeding or if you're a menstruating female, because with all of the blood loss comes iron loss as well. So iron is responsible for hemoglobin production in the body, which is a protein in our red blood cells. It essentially transports oxygen from the lungs to the rest of the body. So if we're low in iron, we could also be low in energy. You may have heard of anemia. It's recommended that you get about 8.7 milligrams or if you are menstruating, upwards of 14 milligrams a day. So we primarily get our iron from legumes, namely red lentils. We love to throw them into soups and stews. We love to use green lentils for taco meat and pasta sauces, as well as whole grains and beans, nuts and seeds, and even dried fruit. And one other interesting tidbit, if you're trying to increase your iron absorption, pair iron rich foods with vitamin C rich foods. So maybe that means you cook up a stir fry with bell peppers and broccoli that are super super vitamin C rich and you cook up some quinoa to go along with it. The next nutrient we get asked a lot about is calcium. So calcium is responsible for strong bones, nervous system functions, and many other tasks in the body. And we should aim to get about 600 milligrams of calcium a day in our diet. This one is not necessary to supplement either as long as you are eating a variety of dark green leafy veggies, particularly ones that are low in oxalates. High oxalate green leafies are gonna be like spinach and chard, and and they're just not as optimal for absorbing calcium, so opt for something like kale instead. And another fun fact is if you wanna optimize your absorption of calcium, pair it with vitamin D rich foods. So that might just mean drinking your green smoothie in the sunshine. Yes, vitamin D is next. And vitamin D is a weird one because it's actually not a vitamin, but a hormone. Vitamin D is like a best friend to calcium and is actually required to absorb the calcium from the gut into the bloodstream. Vitamin D is also super important for healthy, strong bones. So. 
take your vitamin D in addition to eating your calcium. Where do we get vitamin D though? Well, it's in a whole bunch of plant foods, but the best place is my favorite place, and that is the sun, like Aaron said. Enjoying a green smoothie in the sunlight, just 10 or 15 minutes a day of sunlight on your forearms or basically anywhere on your body is gonna give you enough vitamin D. That being said, we still supplement because we live in Nebraska and let's be honest, the sun like never shines here. So we take about 5,000 IUs a day, but your daily recommended value is only about 2,000. So we recommend getting at least that much a day. Next nutrient of importance is our omega-3 fatty acids. So these are responsible for healthy hair, skin, nails, as well as brain and heart function. So what is not to love? These guys are super ridiculously important so the main source we get our omega-3s from are gonna be our seeds and our nuts and even avocados in small amounts, but primarily seeds like flax and chia. Fun fact, just one tablespoon of flax or chia seeds a day will give you 100% of your recommended daily dose of omega-3 fatty acids. So grind your flax seeds into a smoothie or make yourself some chia pudding. That being said, the omega-3s in nuts and seeds are short chain fatty acids and our body converts these into the longer chain, but that can become a more difficult process with aging. So you may want to look into taking a long chain omega-3 supplement, namely EPA and DHA. So you'll wanna take about 250 milligrams a day of an algae-derived omega-3. Next up is B12. Now this one is important not just for vegans, but for everyone. B12 is actually a bacteria found in soil and some like natural spring waters but given our like farming practices as of I don't know the last hundred years there's basically no b12 left in our soil so we all have to supplement again not just people on a whole food plant-based diet not just vegans but everyone should be supplementing with b12 b12 is super important for brain health and nervous system b12 is also super important for a healthy amount of energy and good mood most of the top docs recommend getting 50 micrograms per day we recommend doing a methylated and sublingual form of B12 for optimal absorption. Does anybody know why B12 is always red? Who knows? Comment if you guys know. Next up is iodine. So iodine is very important for healthy thyroid hormone production. Our thyroid is responsible for our body's metabolism. In other words, how quickly cells are working in our body. So if you're feeling a little sluggish or slow, definitely maybe look into getting your thyroid checked and look into making sure you're getting enough iodine in your diet. Ideally, you'll wanna aim for about 150 micrograms a day. And where do you get it? On a plant-based diet, there are small amounts in foods like potatoes, but we typically say either iodized salt or our favorite is sea veggies. So in particular, we buy organic Maine Coast Dulce Flakes. If you sprinkle it into or onto a recipe, you can barely taste it. It's got a little bit of a saltiness to it, and it's gonna give you above and beyond what you need as far as iodine goes. Next up is zinc. So you hear a lot about zinc in regards to fighting infections. It's good for growth, and it's also really good for hormones. I know that when I felt like I've had weird hormone issues going on, I've always tried to supplement a little bit with some zinc and it seems to help especially also when I feel like I'm catching a cold I get out my zinc sprayer or eat a big pile of pumpkin seeds to get my zinc. Most docs recommend that we get seven to 10 milligrams per day, depending on if you're male or female. Men typically need just a little bit more. And our favorite sources are, like I said, pumpkin seeds, number one. It's actually also found in tofu, lots of beans, lots of nuts, and other seeds too. Also, most whole grains have a lot of zinc, and chickpeas are an excellent source. After zinc, next up is selenium. So selenium is also very important. Like many of the things we've mentioned, it's important for hormone, reproduction, and thyroid health. And again, like all of these foods, it's important in protecting the body from damage from free radicals. There's a very simple whole food hack, and it is Brazil nuts. So one Brazil nut is like exactly 100% of your daily recommended value. Aaron actually puts one in our smoothie every day, so we're covered. Every once in a while, I just eat a handful anyway because they're good. So really quick, we're just gonna go over a couple of key vitamins, namely A, C, 
E and K. So vitamin A is great for your immune system as well as your vision. So we primarily get vitamin A from carotenoids, which are found in our orange fruits and veggies like oranges, sweet potatoes, butternut squash. It is then converted in the body into vitamin A. Another fun fact, if you want that golden glow to your skin tone, make sure you are eating plenty of those orange hued foods. Vitamin C is literally found in like everything. It's very easy to obtain through your plant-based diet. It's responsible for healthy immune system function, as well as growth, repair, and development of tissues and collagen production. So something as we begin to age, we begin to think about more and more is healthy collagen production. We don't need to consume collagen from animals. We just need to be consuming collagen promoting plant foods instead. So our body can work on really producing its own youth and vitality. It's also important for cartilage, which equals healthy joints. So my favorite sources other than citrus, like lemons, limes, and oranges are berries, which I literally eat every single day. Again, keeping in mind that vitamin C also is gonna help with your iron absorption. Next up is vitamin E, which is great for skin health, eye health, and immunity. So as a mama-to-be, I'm always slathering on the vitamin E oil and making sure I'm getting plenty of it in my diet to keep my skin soft, stretchy, and supple. So some great sources would be almonds. I eat a lot of almond butter as well. Other nuts and seeds like sunflower and pumpkin are other great sources. Finally, our last vitamin is vitamin K, which is responsible for blood clotting, healthy bones, and kidney function. It's very easy to find on a plant-based diet, in particular in cruciferous veggies like broccoli, Brussels sprouts, and kale. If you guys feel like this seems all too brainy, and like this is <laughs> gonna be a lot of work, we just recommend downloading an app like Chronometer where you simply plug in the foods that you're eating and it tells you what you are and aren't getting. Makes it super, super easy. And all of that being said, the reason we ran you through these nutrients is just to kind of highlight some of our favorite whole food plant ways to obtain these. Yep. So in the perfect world, we honestly probably wouldn't have to supplement if we were living in the tropics, getting right. our vitamin D from the sunshine, getting our B12 from our own fresh garden picked veggies and fruits. Yep. But we don't live in a perfect world and <laughs> You know, we do have a lot of absorption issues, especially as Americans here with leaky gut yep. and things like that. So it may not hurt to invest in a quality multivitamin that comes from whole food sources, not synthetic sources. Right. You know, and even for me being pregnant, it's important to be on a prenatal just as a safeguard since I am growing a human. Totally. <laughs> so we've gone through phases of like no vitamins except for B12 yep. and other phases of multivitamins or, <laughs> you know, dabbling here and there with supplements. Right. But the overwhelming majority of our nutrition is coming from these foods that we're gonna walk you through right here. Starting over here on this side of the island, I would say one of my favorites is pineapple. We always keep at least three on hand because we like to munch on it chopped up, but we also throw a lot of it into our green smoothies. So it's very high in vitamin C. It's also high in bromelain, which is great for fighting inflammation. We've got tons of green leafies. We always stock up on the kale for juices and mostly for smoothies. So curly kale and dino kale. This is probably our favorite and it's the most nutrient dense. You can see it's the darkest. Celery, we either incorporate into juices or I've been putting it in our blueberry green smoothies a lot lately because the sweet and salty combo is to live for. I've been also enjoying sauteing up zucchini and squash with onions and garlic, so we have tons of those. Collards as another option for green smoothies and juices. Bell peppers, super vitamin C rich. We always put them in our rainbow salads. And then we've got both regular yellow potatoes as well as varieties of sweet potatoes. We love the Japanese variety. They have a white flesh inside and then the garnet yam, which is orange. So moving on, some of our other favorites are Brussels sprouts. Again, we like to throw these in the air fryer and they get really good and crispy. Another thing that we use probably two or three times a week is cauliflower. We're always putting cauliflower in our soups, our stews, our Indian recipes, and then carrots. We eat carrots by the bushel. We love munching on them, dipping them in hummus and 
guacamole as opposed to like salty and oily chips. Most importantly in our whole food plant-based diet are carbs, okay? So we literally buy cases of bananas and this is like $25, so it's super affordable. We have bananas for about two weeks, so we eat some of these and then we freeze the rest and make smoothies again, like I said, usually lasts us a couple weeks. We have all of our beans and our grains over here. So some of our favorites are black beans, chickpeas, red lentils, steel cut oats, quinoa, and we use a lot of cashews for dips and sauces. So we always stock up on both Granny Smith apples for juices and smoothies, as well as Honeycrisp for snacking on. They're actually one of Max's favorites. We always get lemons and limes to squeeze into drinks, to put on our Indian food. Tomatoes, we're always adding into our homemade pasta sauces and curries. We've got mangoes, sometimes we get lucky and they're ripe and just super juicy and good to cut open and enjoy as is, as well as tons of these little fresh mandarins, especially for Max, bigger oranges for us to snack on. Cucumbers, these are always primarily going into our green juice recipes. We get the yellow sweet onions to saute for cooking all kinds of soups and stews. More bananas that we'll leave on the countertop for eating fresh, but most of them are going in the freezer. Asparagus has been a spring favorite that we've been sauteing up a lot. And then my primary source of enjoyment for snacks during the day is fresh berries of all types. They're one of the most antioxidant rich sources of plant food, so tons of berries. So at the checkout today, I was talking to the guys who I'm like best friends with, cause I'm there all the time. And they were actually saying that the people that buy like packaged foods spend like sometimes $800 a week. Like they see the same people <laughs> coming through that's insane and I thought we spent a lot but yeah like they were like man you guys buy so much produce and like nothing packaged and so that made us feel good but it also makes us feel good that we're actually not spending as much as some people do mm -hmm. not to mention that if you go to the deli counter or the fresh seafood counter it's right. gonna be ridiculously expensive and imported as well totally. and just simply not as healthy and we've right. gotten this question a lot what would you stock up on as plant-based vegans in yep. a food shortage situation Totally. Well, these we don't buy every week. These last a long time. They're totally. very shelf stable, high in all of your major proteins and irons and nutrients we just went over. Yeah. So it's gonna be a lot safer to actually stock up as a vegan than a meat eater. So if you guys like this video, definitely go back and watch our other food haul videos. We've got at least three or four in there. And give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel if you aren't already, and be sure and hit that bell to stay notified when we post new videos. Another fun video that's one of my favorites is our plant-based food pyramid video, as well as our Dr. Gregor's Daily Dozen video. So we've got tons of resources for you guys. We'll link them below in the description. Ask us any questions in the comments. Let's get a conversation rolling. And until next time, follow Dusty and I on Instagram daily at dbstanzik, at Aaron Stanzik, and eat, move, rest, your best. So you guys only have through the weekend to buy your plant-based bundle and be entered to win this Vitamix blender. We'll include the link in the description below. There are three things we all do every day and we could all be doing them better. Eat, move, and rest. We're Dusty, Aaron, Max, and Bo, and we're the Stanzix. Join us every week as we blend, chop, juice, run, lift, ride, and master our minds on the ultimate quest to find better balance, deeper connection, and true happiness within.